Hi, this is Ahmed from Prism and this course is all about scrapping, scrapping and scrapping. So in nowadays, scrapping is one of the most important and most must have tool in 2019 because uh, Scrappy provides you so much power and so much control on your data that you can get any type of data from any source and you can use it in any way you want. So. In this course we will take you from the scratch to the pro level in this course we are going to cover from very very basics level and we will gradually increase the difficulty level and eventually we will be leading uh, towards the pro level at which we will try to scrap some of the most prominent and some of the most useful sites for uh, the data analysis and we can get the data and I'll try to manage, I'll try to put some sort of data management and data analysis in the end tutorials as well. So you guys must have a grip on uh, that when you ever you scrap out any data from any source, how you can utilize it via uh, different analytical skills. So this course is all about scrapping. So in this course, what we will be doing is we will be using the basically the Python and there is a Python framework known as Scrappy. So uh, I think it's just uh, quite enough that we have talked about Scrappy. So let me just explain you a bit that what Scrappy is for those of you who have no idea about Scrappy and just or just a mild idea of Scrapping and you have come here uh, just by knowing from any friend or any employee any of your colleagues that uh, you must learn about scrapping. So scrapping means to scrap data out from the internet. It's quite handy, it's quite useful and it allows you to fetch data from several sources from the internet. In the scrappy, uh, you basically, uh, basically just consider as a site, a, a website that has several information present in several divs or several paragraphs. So what you guys will do in Scrappy that you will just go to that site, uh, your crawler, the Scrappy, the script you will write is known as the crawler. The crawler will just go to on that site, try to scroll on all the data that you want and then extract that data for you and return it to you. And then it's upon you that how you want to utilize that data and how you can uh, save that data. So Scrappy is quite useful because there are numerous data present on the internet and what you want to do is you just you will just get that data you will put it in the right way in the right direction you can analyze it infer any reference you want from it and you can make you can use it to earn money to help your client out or any sort of in, uh, increasing your business so for this scrappy the prerequisites are let me just uh, take you the next introduction uh, that the prerequisites you want to uh, you uh, there should be present in you to learn this course is just a mild knowledge or just a basic level knowledge of programming let's say you must have uh, idea of how uh, how to write a code how to just simply uh, perform arithmetic operations how to use for loop how to use iterations and uh, just just a minimal level of programming and also uh, in any in, it doesn't mean that uh, we are doing scrapping in python so that you must have a knowledge of scrappy uh, you must have the knowledge of python because they, i will also design a course on python a crash course on python that if you guys avail that course you will surely have a good grip on python as well if you are not familiar with python programming language but for this course our main objective is not on programming our main objective is on scrapping and if you are not familiar with programming i do recommend you to just pause this video here go check out our course on python crash uh, go check out our python crash course give it a go and you will be quite able to understand what i am going to say from now onwards but for those who are familiar with programming at least or uh, it's quite better if you know python so uh, for you guys the prerequisites are first of all the programming you must know some of the basic level of programming and the it would be more better if you know something about python if you do not know just go and check out the other course on python crash course and the next thing is you guys must have a minimal level of knowledge of web structure so from web structure what i mean is let me just take you to a web uh, browser over here so uh, let's say just type 
uh, Dawn. So now when the dawn news will open, uh, what we will do is we will try to, f I will try to show you guys what basically the structure of the website is, what basically the structure of any website is. Uh, let me just uh, not take you into the dawn website. Let us just inspect the Google as well because uh, Google is common around all the world. So if you are listening in other regions of this tutorial, uh, you guys must be familiar must have to be familiar with the framework which we are going to use so uh, let me just inspect it out via pressing f12 or just inspect this and uh, when this inspection uh, will open you will notice that all of this information that are present in that are present in this let's say div that uh, Don is Pakistan's oldest leading and most widely read English language newspaper and uh, whatsoever this is a text written on this web page. Next there is also that certain text written on this word web page. Uh, there are certain links, there are certain images, there are certain data, there are certain URLs that leads you to another URL that leads you to another page where you can fetch other data or other information from there. So what we will want what uh, with what i will be teaching you guys is that how you can crawl the internet how you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into the internet one page leading to another page leading to another page leading to another page and trying to fetch all the information present on that data uh, relative to your inform relative to your domain and try to extract that information and i'm really sorry about that uh, slow uh, internet because uh, internet in our region is down uh, now so I hope that you guys will suffer be, uh, with me uh, uh, for a small time and then later I will try to uh, do any compensation for it. So now uh, as you can see that there is a structure of website that there is HTML tag, there is header tag, there is body tag, in the body tag there will be certain div, there will be certain paragraphs. So uh, the main point of this all discussion is that you must have a minimal knowledge of how the website work for example sake let's say this div and this div this id this everything each and everything uh, you must have a minimal knowledge of how you can basically just write a simple a simple web page simple html web page i am not asking about any uh, animations any further canvases or anything any advanced topic i'm just asking about simple paragraphs uh, simple body tags simple table tags and simple divs so uh, nothing more than that so you must have a familiar knowledge on this and now uh, so uh, we have uh, discussed about the prerequisite for the scrappy this scrappy course in the next lecture we will be going up i will going to tell you about scrappy in more detail hi this is ms from prism and this is a course about scrapping from scratch to pro so in the previous lecture what I have taught you guys is about the prerequisites that you want regarding scrapping. So now what we are doing going to do is I will tell you guys about scrappy in more detail and in more technical ways. So previously uh, what I have discussed with you was just an overview of the scrappy but in this lecture what we will do is we will look more about documentation of the scrappy. Uh, we will not go much uh, more deeper into the documentation but I will uh, just show you guys about the scrappy documentation and then we will see about how scrapping works. So for this uh, let's just search on internet about scrappy documentation and there it will be certain links on that. Firstly just open the first one and over here it will lead you towards the scrappy installations. So for installing the scrappy what you want on your machine is just use pip install scrappy and that's it you get the scrappy right away on your machine so this is not a big deal and later when we will try uh, when we will do some hands on on the scrappy we will try to write our own spiders our own crawlers our own scrappy scripts then we will surely be using uh, this instruction to install the scrappy but uh, for now i'm just uh, giving you guys an overview of how you can get scrappy for your machine 
it's not a big deal it's not a tough thing you just have to do pip install scrappy just these three instructions and boom you got the scrappy right away on your machine so this is it and then there is something known as spiders so uh, the thing that i told you guys that the uh, there are certain script there are certain crawlers that crawl the internet and get out the information for the required information for you these crawlers are termed as spiders in the scrappy so what crawlers do that crawlers are simply just like the crawler uh, i know it's quite uh, strange but the thing crawler means to crawl so uh, the crawler just crawl the internet and try to fetch out that what information is you uh, what information do you want or what information has to be ignored so spider does the same thing so spider is just a crawler that uh, in scrappy you said your crawler as a spider so what spider does is that you sp tell the spider about certain urls that start from this url take accounts into this 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 url uh, go on the second page go on the third page do not go on the fourth page try to fetch the information present in the second div of this section try to figure out the text on this div so uh, this work are all been done with the spiders so then uh, next is you can also deploy scrappy on the cloud and uh, cloud formation uh, is basically one of the top rated things in 2020 so if uh, you might be familiar with the cloud uh, cloud so i will try to accumulate this thing in the end as well uh, that somehow we will try to deploy our sp uh, scrappy script on the cloud and i will also try to explain you a little bit or i'll uh, schedule a little tutorial on cloud computation as well so just to give you guys a little bit taste of cloud computation and then we will try to put our scrappy this scrappy uh, script on that cloud and we will deploy it on the cloud so next this is it from this uh, link next the actual scrappy documentation which is the first link so actual scrappy documentation so uh, what is this scrappy at a glance installation guide scrappy tutorial and examples so first of all let's just open scrappy at a glance so scrappy is an application framework for crawling websites as i just told you guys and extracting structured data which can be used for a wide range of useful applications like data mining information process information processing or historical archival even though scrappy was originally designed by web scrapping it can also be used to extract using apis such as amazon associates web services or as a general purpose web crawler so that means that you can use scrappy in many ways and you can try to hit the apis using scrappy you do not you are not bound to just uh, fetch the data from the web websites you can also use the web apis to fetch data from there using scrappy and you can also use uh, amazon web services to get to and there are also many general purpose web crawlers that i will talk to you guys later about that what basically a general purpose web crawler is so now walk through an example of spider in order to show you what scrappy brings to be to the table we will talk you uh, we will walk you through an example of a scrappy spider using the simplest way to run a spider so here is a code for a spider that with what it will do it will scrap famous course from this site when you will open this site you will notice that there are certain codes written on this site i am not opening this site uh, for uh, here because i want you guys to open it and look it by yourself so uh, this site consists of certain codes uh, written and there are, will be uh, the author of the codes and tags of the code and a number of uh, numerous informations uh, just open it site and give it a go and next what this spider is doing first of all you just import the scrappy then you write a class of course spider in parents it inherits it from scrappy dot spider and then this spider means that i want this class to be act as a crawler then i will name that spider that the name of the spider is quotes then the start urls the start urls defines that from where i want to start my spider to get the information or to start the 
crawling. So uh, do not uh, mix this thing by a practical implementation now because now I am just taking you guys through just the uh, just through the overview or the working of the scrappy. <coughs> And just be with me for a while and then uh, we will when shift on the practice section uh, I will surely be doing all of this thing each and everything line by line by myself so now you get the name of the spider you get the start URLs for the spider start URLs mean that start your spider by uh, start your spider crawling from these sites and then the parse method so parse method is a callback method so what this callback method means that you do not have to worry about calling that method that whenever this class in instantiates it tells to the compiler that I want to call the I want to fetch this in I want to fetch the information from this URL and I want to get the result of this URL in this methods response over here. So when you open this site you will notice that there is a number of codes present and then what I will do what this scrappy do is that all dot all those response present in the inspect element of this site will be sent straight away towards this response and when and then I can use this to access all the information present on that site. So uh, when in the next lecture I will uh, we will try to fetch information from the terminal shell. Uh, I will show you guys how basically this works. But for now you can assume that response contains all of the information present on this particular link. So then uh, what it is doing that it is saying it is using a CSS selector to get out the information. So for what CSS selector is that there is a data there is a, let's say a data present in a div and that div is present in a paragraph and that paragraph is present in a table. So I want to get the information present inside that table of our present inside the table then the div then the prep table paragraph div and there is the information uh, just ignore if I'm making any uh, fumbling uh, this is just for the understanding purpose that there is initially a table tag the table tag contains the paragraph the paragraph contains the div and the div contains the information so for now what the major portion comes in that you have to write the CSS selector to tell the spider that I want this information that is present inside the table, a paragraph and a div. So uh, when the all information or all the response are present inside your div the uh, or present inside your response, the scrappy cannot just guess by itself that what information it wants and what information it do not want. You have to tell the spider manually that I want this, this, this information present in this, this, this section. So what it's doing over here, it's just doing that response.css div.code. So it's saying that I want the response.css. I want to get the response.css. I'm putting a CSS selector that get me dot get get me the, uh, the div that has a class code. So uh, do not worry about CSS selectors. I am surely putting some uh, lectures later on to give to give you guys more and more and even uh, uh, you can say that a uh, quite big chunk of the lectures will be dedicated for the CSS selectors in the hands on so that uh, you guys must uh, have a good grip on CSS selectors because spiders is all about writing a good CSS selector that can fetch out the information from you because getting towards a particular link and fetching its information is not a big deal. This can be done by several Python imports uh, such as requests such as beautiful soup and uh, there are a number of imports. But the beauty of scrapping is that it allows you to write CSS selectors that particularly go into a particular region and fetch the information out for you. So now what it's doing is that it's saying response.css I want the div that have the code class get that div out and then here comes the yield and what yield do is what whenever you want a particular information out from the page you just use yield so what you uh, later when we will do hands on I will try to explain it more and more uh, instead of uh, why we should use yield instead of using return and where we should use return uh, we should not use yield I will tell you later uh, more about it uh, later but for now you can assume that the information that you want to be extracted from the uh, page you use yield for it. so what it will do is it will just return that div to the code 
and then over here I'm accessing the CSS of the code and I'm accessing the get text and I'm guessing getting the author name. When you will open the page, you will notice this as your own. In the next lecture, I will try to figure out, I will try to uh, use this URL, op I will try to open this URL and I will show you how this is working. But for now, uh, let's just stick to this uh, old documentation. And then put this in a text file, named it to something got spider.py and run the spider using the spider command that scrappy run spider this is the old command uh, i will tell you a new command that you can use to extract the data from the from that spider you can use to run that spider uh, just ignore this command this is the old version so uh, i am seriously worried about that why they have not updated uh, this instruction on their actual documentation but they have uh, just obsoleted it in the practical implementation so when this spider finishes you get all this information present that uh, I hope so that you are not getting exactly uh, how you can how I am fetching this information but in the next lecture when I will uh, open the code start, uh, site and we will try to extract the information from there you will uh, be seeing that how this extraction works and then what just happened is that the word spider when you ran the command scrappy run spider course.py which is all command then uh, Scrappy looked for a spider definition inside it and ran it through its crawler engine. So this is the uh, obsolete thing. So for now what we will do is we can say Scrappy crawl and the name of the spider. So for that if we want to run this spider what we will do is Scrappy crawl quotes the name of the spider. So now uh, the crawl started by making requests to the URL defined in the start URLs. As I just said, that it will just go to the start URL, fetch the URL and call it uh, and uh, ask the internet to get the response for this URL. Attributes in this case only the URL for quotes in humor category and call the default callback method parse. So parse is the default callback method that whenever the response is get back by whenever the response get back for the start url it will be just passed towards the parse method then parsing the response object as an argument in the parse callback we loop through the code elements using a css selector yield a python dictionary with the extracted code text and the author look for a link to the next page and schedule uh, this is just an extra task so uh, we will try to figure it out in the later because over here what it is doing it is then looking for the next page that if there is a next page present or not and if there is a next page present it is just going on that next page and try to figure out again all the course present on that side so here you notice one of the main advantages about scrapping scrappy request for schedule and processed asynchronously this means the scrappy does not need to wait for a request to be finished and processed so for example let's say let's say you have uh, you want to fetch a particular information about an article and you want to fetch the information about 10 articles so if what this means that asynchronous and synchronous let me first tell you about synchronous and then i will come here on asynchronous so what synchronous means that if i want to fetch the information about all the 10 articles and let's say each article further has the information present on an other URL. What Synchronous will do is it will first fetch the information about the first article. Then it will wait for the information present of the first article on the other page to come back and then it will uh, combine the both then it will move towards the second article it will fetch the information of the second article it will wait for the second article's information present on the other link and when that information comes back to the spider it just combines the second article with that new information and saves it then it will move towards the third fetch the third information wait for the third uh, information present on the next link get that information combine it and save it then it will move to the fourth fifth six seventh eight ninth and tenth article and the tenth article it will again fetch the information present on the tenth article and then what it will do is it will call to the remaining information present on the tenth article on the other url it will fetch that information it will combine them and save them so this is the concept of synchronous that every each thing is synced with another thing you cannot just straight away call the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the articles at one you have to call the first article the remaining portion of first article the second article the remaining portion of second article 
the third article the remaining portion of third article the 8 7 8 9 tenth article and the remaining portion of the tenth article so this is how synchronous calls work so what is the beauty of scrappy is that it's asynchronous so what asynchronous means that if when you try to call the scrappy uh, when you try to uh, one when you want when you want the scrappy to get the information about the article one so it will try to call the article one it will get all the information of the article one and now it instead of waiting for getting the response from the uh, for from the url of the remaining information of the article one it will handle this over to an other thread of its own and then it will just try to get the information of the article to here so what the previous was doing that it was waiting for the article once remaining information to come and then after combining it it just saves it and then moves towards the second so let's say there is a wait of five seconds for each article to get the information from the other url so what synchronous will do is it will get the all the information present on the first uh, article and then wait for the five seconds until the information present on the uh, other url comes for the first uh, article and then combine them but in the asynchronous whenever it reads the information for the first article now instead of waiting there for the five seconds what it will do it will just move towards the second article fetching and as soon as the information comes back it will then go move here combine them and save them so now you are saving your five seconds that but when you are wasting on the synchronous calls now you are saving these five seconds and you are just combining it all along with all of the articles so just imagine that if there are millions of articles you want to fetch and you are wasting five seconds on each article you can imagine how far this time will uh, leads you and if you are saving only these five seconds you can also imagine that how uh, minimize how, how it will minimize the time you are uh, doing your scrapping and how it can save your resources and time so now uh, this is the main advantage of scrapping that it is asynchronously working so uh, this was it on this lecture that what about i will uh, just give you a scrappy at a glance and in the next lecture what we will do is we will try to look uh, some more tutorial videos uh, some more tutorial uh, lectures over here and we will try to dive more deep into this scrapping hi i am ahmed from prism and this is a course on scrappy from scratch to pro so up till here what we have seen is i have taught you guys some of the prerequisites of the scrappy and we have trying uh, we try to dive into the scrappy official documentation and try to absorb some of the more technical terms regarding scrappy so in the next lec in this lecture what we will do is i will tell you guys show you guys about these examples and but before that uh, what i will do is i will just tell you guys about how this spider works so that you guys have a uh, idea i hope that you guys have opened this select open this uh, link and you have seen about how this is working but for those who have not opened it and now uh, we're waiting for me to open this now i'm opening for you and for those who have opened it you can just skip this portion and you can just uh, uh, go straight away for this topic so now when I open this lecture, uh, when I open this site, I am over here where I got some quotes. So when I inspect one of that quote, it takes me over here. So uh, for instance, all of the data present in this inspect element is present in my response over here because start url was equal to this and all the information present in uh, the present in this page is now present in our response and now what we are doing is we are saying for quote in response.css and dive.quote uh, sorry div.quote so it is asking now what we are doing is we are trying to access uh, let me just search it control f and now what when i say div oops now when i said div it 
gives me all the locations of the div. So when I press enter, it is leading me towards the div. So I cannot ask the Scrappy to get all the information present in the div. So it will not provide me the codes. So what the Scrappy does that it says that I want the divs with the class of dot codes. Uh, do not worry about how to write CSS selector. Later on, I will be tell you guys how you can use uh, how you can write CSS selector. But for now, what I will do is I can say div dot code. So here, now I am getting the information all all information present over here. So now when I press enter. It leads me towards the next quotes, next quotes, next quote. And now I am only hovering on the quotes. And if I open this, I will get over here and there is my code. So now what the actual code is doing that after getting this code section, after getting all of this, all of this information present, what it is doing is It is then trying to fetch, uh, then it is trying to put another CSS selector and trying to access the span and want to get the text of the span. So over here, when I say this body dot code and then I'll say I want span and I want the text, uh, the class to be text. So it leads me in this span and then when I say text, it returns me the text. So uh, up till here, we have seen the working of this site and in the next lecture, we are going to see about these examples. Hi, I'm Ahmed from Prism and this is a course on Scrappy from scratch to pro. So in the previous part of this lecture, what I told you guys is uh, we were discussing about Scrappy and in this in the previous lecture, I told you about about and taught you guys about the working of the basic this uh, function. Uh, that just grabs the information from the uh, this website and I told you guys about how you it is actually fetching that information and how this actually CSS selectors are working. So for this lecture we will be heading towards uh, in the next part of this lecture which stands that I will try to figure I will try, try to show you guys about the examples or scrappy tutorials. So now creating a project to create a scrappy project what you will do is you will just write that scrappy start project and the name of the project and it just generates all the framework for you for the scrappy to run properly so you do not need to worry about setting the item setting the pipeline for uh, setting the synchronous or asynchronous or setting the priorities it just do all the things relative to the framework for you on its own by just writing this command that scrappy start project the name of the project so oh, in this fact in this example it is taking the example of tutorial over here. So this is the structure of the directories that will uh, that will be uh, implemented uh, that will be generated when you will try to when you will run this command on the terminal. So there is a scrappy there is a, there is a tutorial there is a scrappy.cfg deploy configuration file and then this is the project python module you will import your code from here, these are the items, there are the middleware, there are the pipelines, there are the settings, there are the spiders. And uh, later when we will try to uh, dive more deep into practice section, uh, I will surely explaining you guys about this. But for now, you can just uh, see this as, and take it as an overview that this will be the working directory structure. So our first spider. Spiders are classes that you define at the scrappy uses at, at, and that scrappy uses to scrap information from a website or a group of websites. This is a mandatory thing to be noticed that a group of websites. So you cannot, uh, you are not just uh, uh, bounded to use the spider to crawl only a particular or a one side. You can use spider to fetch information from multiple web websites. Although it is not a good practice, in general, a good practice is to uh, dedicate a spider to a particular website. And if you have three websites to crawl the data, you must have to write three separate spiders so that it makes uh, the spiders more easy to maintain. And if there is an issue, it will not uh, basically 
uh, it will not imply effects on other two spiders. It will just be specific to that spider. So it's all uh, you can use a spider. There are uh, case use cases where you are compelled to use a particular web a particular spider to uh, read data from more than one website. Let's say you have a data present on a site and then it leads for the other information, it has to get information from the other website. So in that case, you do you have to use the spider to fetch information from more than one website. But if you are getting information in parallel from the three websites, then the good practice is to just use three spiders for each of the website and it is a good practice. But it was mandatory here to tell you guys that web spider can work on can run on more than one website, uh, same single spider. So uh, there must subclass spider, which means that there has to be a spider, uh, which means that there has to be a, there has to be inherited from the spider class and all of the implementations, all of the functions are being provided in the spider class that do the magic for you and they, they take care of all the things up. and defines the initial request to make optionally how to follow links in the pages and how to parse the download page context to extract data so it tells basically in the spider you tells that how you will crawl the data how you will uh, how you will crawl the website how you will get towards the data and how you will extract that data and then this is the code for our first spider save it in a file named code spider.py under the tutorial spider so in the directory tutorial in the folder spider what it is asking you to create a file spy code spider.py and just then just put the all of the above it all of the code that is written below to save it in the code spider.py. So over here, what this code do, what this code tells that first of all, just import the scrappy because it is the basic necessity for any framework to be run that you have its import present in your code. Then again, in the previous that we have seen over here that we just write a class we write the name of the spider. Uh, this is the name by which the uh, spider framework identifies which spider it wants to run. Let's say I have three sites. Uh, one is relate. One site is abc.com, other is uh, 123.com and other is let's say xyz.com. So I will name them accordingly so that whenever I want to run the spider of 123.com, I will just say scrappy crawl 123 and it will know that I want to run a particular spider. So it's just a good practice to write the name of the spider relative to its site. So whenever you have to run it, you will just name the website and it will run that spider for you. And then there are start request methods. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the start URL and it contains the URLs. But over here, there is a start request method. So uh, just step back a little bit. Now I'm going to explain you guys. It's quite a tricky thing and it's quite easy at the same time. So what it was doing over here that we got start URLs. It is not present in any function. What spiders do is it will get that information. It will get the start URLs and call the URL, fetch that information and give it to the parse method. That's it. It gets the in URL present in the start URLs. It calls that on the internet. It gets the response and pass it in this calls back method pass in the its response variable. But over here, what it is happening that I got a method dev start request. So start request again is a callback method. So when this method is present, the scrappy will not look for start URLs. It will just straight away go into this method. And over here, you can tell the spite scrappy that I want to get Uh, and you will tell scrappy that I want this scrappy dot request. I want to yield this URL. It will get this URL from here and then it will just call that URL over here. And in the URL, you provide the URL that you want to fetch. So for URL will first initially gives me this URL. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I want to get information from this URL and then the callback. So callback means that when the information fetched from this URL will be present to the spider, what you are expecting to do with this response. So callback tells us this request that whenever you get the information back, 
just provide this into the response or the first variable or just provide it in the response of this function so when this when the url this url gets the response back actual response back from the internet this response has just been passed towards this parse response if i say callback self dot abc it will when the url response will get back to the spider it will then look for the abc function and it will pass the response towards that function so for there i am just giving it the parse and it is just saying that response over here gets all the information for this url and now the magic thing of asynchronous so it will not just go it will not just do that i want this url i want the information from this url it has called that url it has called that i want the information to be retrieved from this url it will not now wait for loop will not wait for this first url information to be retrieved from the internet i am repeating this thing again that scrappy dot request when it calls for the first url over here it will not wait for the response to be get into the this callback what it will do is it will also call that next url for the response and then as soon let's say there are 20 urls and it will just say give me the response of one url give me the response of second give me the response for third give me the response for fifth give me the response for tenth give me the response for eleven and let's say when it is going to ask for the response of twelve the response for the first url arrives then it will somehow try to manage running this url uh, this response over here and it will not hinder it will not stop back the actual running execution of this for url and this is the beauty of scrappy that if it is is if it is synchronous it will firstly call this url over here and now it will wait for let's say five seconds for this response to get back to the spider and in the parse method the callback method and over here it will perform all the other operations and then it will extract the second url call it perform the operation and so and so forth and it will waste a lot of time in the waiting process for the data to become but the as you can know but as you know that it is asynchronous it is just sending request one 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 after one after one after one and then whenever a data receives back it just utilize that data so uh, let us just now see about what uh, this documentation is saying about this code that as you can see our spider subclass is spider scrappy dot spider and defines some attributes and methods name identifies the spider it must be unique within our project that you cannot set the same name for different spiders you have to be mentioned explicitly defines different names for different spiders start request must return an iterable or request so which means that start request must have to return a further request it cannot just uh, simply yield a dictionary or any other thing it must have to return a request so uh, must return an iterable of requests you cannot return a list of requests or write a generator function you have to return a request uh, if you are not getting some of the points, I am just saying it again. Just be with me for a while. Then we will then when we will try to shift on the pra practical e examples, uh, you will surely get an idea of what I am saying right now. If you are getting it, it's excellent. If you are not getting it, it is still excellent because you just have to focus on what I am saying instead of just dive diving deep into the understanding of technicalities. Just go with my words just follow it just try to listen what i am saying and now which the spider will begin to crawl from it will return the uh, iteration it will return the request and the spider will try to get in try to crawl information from that request subsequent request will be generated successively from these initial requests and then parse a method that will be called to handle the response downloaded for each of the requests made the response parameter is an instance of text response that holds the page content and has further helpful methods to handle it so it's saying that this response parameter basically contains all the information of that response for example if i try to hit over here the all the information of this website of this web page is present in this uh, components of here so this response is now equal to all of the information present here 
So what it is saying over here that you can use it on numerous way and you can get your information straight away. And then the parse method usually parse the response extracting the scrap data as dictionaries and also finding new URLs to follow the creating new requests from them. So for example, if I'm on this page and I fetched all the codes present on this particular page, now I want to check that whether there is a next page or not. So I will check out for a next page and then I will hit on it again. And now uh, for uh, this lecture, we have seen the first example of writing a spider in more detail. And in the next lecture, we are going to see how to run your spider. Hi, I am Ahmed from Prism and this is a course on Scrappy from scratch to pro. So in the previous lectures, we have seen about some of the basics of Scrappy in a more technical way. And uh, we have gone through some of the examples and we have seen uh, how we how it is the structure of the Scrappy project and how basically the Scrappy framework uh, is made, uh, has made directories in our uh, home directory or in our whatever folder where we try to create the project. So in this lecture, we will try to see the remaining documentation of the previous lecture. So over here. But we have seen so far that we have created a spider that intended to get the uh, data from these pages and uh, call this function uh, as a callback self.parse and in self.parse I got the response from these requests, uh, these URLs and then in the response I am get trying to manipulate the CSS selectors and fetching out my relevant data. Over here, we have seen above uh, the uh, terminologies we have used above and what are the basically name, the start requests, the parse and the requests. So how to run our spider? So to run the spider, you can simply say scrappy crawl codes. So you might have noticed that the previous documentation, uh, there was something like scrappy run spider and all that. But this is the actual way of running a spider and this is the updated a version of the documentation and I think that they somehow skipped that uh, I do not know the really exact reason might be they want to uh, uh, they want it to be remain as it is or whatsoever the reason is but this is the actual way of running the spider that scrappy crawl the name of the spider this command runs the spider with the name codes that we have just added that will send some request to the course dot to scrap dot com domain you will get an output similar to this and in his in this command prompt you will get the output like this so now check the files in the current directory you should notice uh, you should notice that two new files have been created one is quotes 1.html the other is quotes 2.html with the content of the respective urls as one of the parse methods so what it has done that it has simply get the res uh, response from that particular url and then it has just simply saved them save the response in the file and then in the output uh, in, the, in the same directory you will be getting the quotes 1.html and quotes 2.html and with the content of the respective urls as your parse methods instruction so uh, i want you to guys to just give it a go and try to implement this thing and see how basically the function is running uh, you may notice that there are two files course onehtml and course 2.html and in those files you will be having the actual code written uh, to open that file you must have to edit them if you try to double click on them it will then just be open in a browser and if you want to see the exact code you will just try to edit the file uh, right click and the options you will get the edit menu and now what just happened under the hood now this is the interesting portion I just gave you guys the overview of what is happening, what was happening under the hood. Uh, but let us just see about the official documentation. So if I have uh, skipped something or uh, then this will manage to tell you all of the things in detail. So Scrappy schedules the Scrappy request object returned by the start request methods of the spider. So what Scrappy is doing the Scrappy schedules the Scrappy dot request object. So this is the Scrappy dot object request that I am returning from the start request. Uh, start request method this scrappy then schedule this request and then upon receiving a response for each one its instance 
its instances response object is calls and it sorry it instantiates response object and calls the callback method associated with the request so then when the response for the particular url gets back it calls the callback method with the self dot parse and pass the response of that url over here and the callback method associated with the request in this case the parse method passing the response as arguments and then a shortcut to start request method instead of implementing a start request method that generates scrappy dot request object from urls you can just use start urls so what we have seen in this lecture uh, sorry in this documentation it has also been depicted over here that instead of using start request you can simply say start urls and it will eventually be doing the same thing that it will try to fetch this information uh, the url first first url and get the response and pass it to the parse so uh, both are in a different way the same thing so now uh, instead of implementing the start request method that generates scrappy request object the urls you can just define a start url class attribute with a list of urls this list will then be used by the default implementation of the start request to create the initial request from your spider so it will then be creating the initial request from the spider and when getting the response back it will just simply pass the response to the callback then the parse method will be called to handle each of the requested of those for those urls so when the response for this url gets back the parse method will be explicitly called for the response of this url and then the response of this url gets back the parse method will be explicitly called for this response for the for the response of this url this doesn't mean that uh, it will overlap the parse method for two different urls it just dedicate the parse method for a single url and then when the all the process is present in the parse method for a particular url finishes it then assigns the parse method to the next url response and then repeat the same thing again again it will not overlap otherwise it there will be race conditions and other stuff uh, to be worried about but the scrappy to carry uh, to uh, maintain the safety it just uh, try to dedicate the parse method to each url at a single time then scrap is a uh, default callback method which is called to re re respect uh, request without an explicitly assigned callback is the parse method so the parse method just simply get called whenever a response get back from the start urls and this method has been called so for example if there are an other method that is calling a further request and the request call come back for that method then it will not definitely be going in the parse method so uh, just uh, to be uh, just we have to notice this thing and then the best uh, it will uh, sorry uh, just skip it uh, that it will not go into the parse it will go into its particular callback the best way to learn how to extract the data with scrappy is trying selectors using the scrappy shell so when uh, we will try to hands on this thing we will open the scrappy shell and we will try to fetch all this information from the scrappy and then we will try to do particular uh, things from them so uh, i am planning to put the practice uh, this practice shell task in the next few lectures so hoping that in the next or in the come uh, second next second next lecture you will be seeing some of the hands on uh, but for this lecture we will just stick to the documentation so uh, i think that this thing uh, we will cover when we will just uh, we will cover this thing in depth uh, when we will try to uh, use this in shell uh, because we doing this thing uh, just verbally uh, does not makes much sense so uh, let us just go an overview of it that you will write this command and it will get the data from this page url and then there is there will be a response at uh, variable provided to you that contains the response of that url and then down here you can just write the css selectors for them to get some data to get all the data and then from that css selector you are you can also get the you can also apply further css selectors on the extracted links and one more thing is xpath so uh, for this lecture i will not be focusing much on xpath because uh, this is not a thing uh, that you should mix that xpath and css selector so uh, we will stick towards the css selectors because css selectors uh, are 
much more powerful than the XPath and they are more commonly used than the XPath. So for this series, we will be sticking strictly towards the CSS selectors, but somehow, somewhere, uh, I will try to accumulate uh, the XPath as well. So you guys uh, just get a taste of the XPath as well. And then uh, extracting quotes and author. So for the example sake, it is extracting the quotes and author from the particular site. And then we will try to when run this, we will also try to extract the information from uh, this particular site. And extracting data in our spider. Okay, so now it will then extract the actual over here URL. Uh, actual spiders and it is getting this URL data from this start URLs and then over here it is then extracting the data so when we will write our first spider you will notice that we are we will be doing all of this stuff then sorting the step that I don't think that this is important and the other thing is following links so following links are quite important in the scrappy that here this is the next uh, when I hit on this URL, I only get the codes that are present on this particular page. But what if I want to get the data from next pages as well? So here comes the use of following links. So uh, nowadays, the uh, what the developers are doing that instead of stuffing the information on a single page, they are just dividing it via pagination. They are just uh, showing you let's say 10 products on up one page and next products will be uh, on page number two for this course example there are particular 10 codes on a single web page and then for the next page uh, for then for the, the next 10 codes they use the next page so uh, pagination are one is one of the most prime attribute of website development and it is also a quite important in scrapping because uh, 20 to 30 percent of the site uh, still accumulates all of this information in one go and it is uh, just a uh, side note that it is not a good approach but the remaining 80 to 70 percent of the site use pagination to show their data and to improve their user interface for example sake let's say i want uh, to open the uh, let's say an e-commerce site that provides me the information of the jackets so if i get uh, if the website has let's say thousand jackets so one approach would be it will send me all of the information all of the thousand jackets information in one go and then what it will do it will harm my internet uh, it will let's it will consume my more MBs it will take much more delay it will be most uh, exhaustive job on the server end and also I might be possible that I will just select one or two uh, jackets from the top 20 uh, jackets and the remaining uh, 980 jackets just remain untouched. So the best approach is pagination. So same is followed by Scrappy. So if you are scrapping uh, e-commerce site or the course.py or any other website, the pagination will be there. So what Scrappy do is Scrappy allows you to fetch the URLs from the certain anchor tags and then uh, give it a new request and then get that information back and then do the further processes on that thing again. So this is the basic purpose of following links and the basic need of following links. So uh, a shortcut for creating request uh, just uh, I think it's a uh, important thing as well because uh, some of the uh, pages uh, let's say I have uh, e-commerce site and at the e-commerce site I got the categories of men women and kids so my site says that say HTTPS ABC.com and then I have the certain URLs so for the let's say child, child category instead of writing the whole URL HTTPS ABC.com slash child section what the developers are doing they are just putting the anchor tag with the child section only they do not complete the URL and then what they do is they just combine that section uh, that child section with the existing URL and fetch out the URL so same thing has been replicated in the pipe in the scrapping as well that they instead of putting the whole URL against the uh, news category they are just providing you to use response.follow and then it assumes that 
I have to follow this new URL with respect to the page I am currently crawling. So uh, we will uh, see this later the difference between response.follow and request. Uh, what are the difference between them because response.follow works with respect to the currently opened or currently crawling page and this crappy.request basically generates an entirely new request. So over here and more examples and patterns just ignore this using spider arguments uh, I don't think so that they are of any so uh, I think this is it uh, from this lecture and in our next lecture what we will be doing is we will be using scrappy and scrappy shell to fetch the informations. Hi I'm Ahmed from Prism and this is a course of scrappy from scratch to pro. So now in the previous lectures we have seen about some of the documentations of the scrappy and now we are heading towards some implementation of the scrapping. So for this we are currently using the PyCharm IDE you can just download it by, uh, by going on their site it's a free software and you can just download it uh, there is nothing uh, complicated in it but I will make sure that there has to be a link uh, in the description for you uh, to just download and install Py, uh, PyCharm and now I have created a project named Prism and in this project you can uh, just go to the settings uh, okay first of all uh, let's just take me to the terminal so terminal basically is just a, a command line or a shell in which you can write or execute your instructions related to your program so you can just simply uh, type in the terminal that I want you to execute this 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 statement and I want the computer to do this thing so uh, it's just related to this thing uh, when we will uh, try to move when we we'll move further we will try to write the scripts in a proper .py file .python file and then we will execute the script right away but for now what we are doing is we will try to execute the python instructions or we will try to see how scrappy works in this shell so first of all when i type scrappy shell it shows me an error that is fatal error launcher which means that uh, it is unable to find out this scrappy so for this what we can do is we can just simply go to file settings and here in the settings you can just search project interpreter interpreter uh, you can just simply type interpreter or project interpreter uh, both are the same and here project in project interpreter you can click on plus and then these are the available packages so which means that uh, our package is uh, for those of you who don't have any idea about packages uh, the package is a set of programs or a set of codes that has been pre-written for you and you just have to import them and you can utilize their functionalities so uh, you can assume that uh, let me just try to uh, install this first and then we will discuss later about it now here when we can search scrappy you will see that there is a package named scrappy and it's the high level web crawling and web scrapping framework just install the package and now uh, wait for uh, 5 to 2 5 to 10 uh, 5 to 6 minutes hopefully and it will uh, be installed but uh, until then uh, let me just explain you about the packages uh, what about uh, what all these packages are so uh, the in Python or in any other programming languages what the programmers or the developers of the language do that they try to maintain certain packages or certain libraries by themselves then uh, if anyone needs a particular thing he can just avail that and use them so for instance let's say you have to write uh, you have to perform your uh, arts assignment and for that you have to uh, you will be needing uh, the colors you will be needing the chair, sketchbook and you will be needing uh, let's say a uh, uh, portrait so all these three things have been pre uh, available for you and you just need to grab them you just know how uh, what things you have to grab because for the art assignment you I don't think so that you will be needing to grab a hammer or a screwdriver uh, you just need to grab the right tools you just need how you just know how to use the right tools and you can do all the stuff from them same is the case with the available packages in these packages uh, they have maintained almost each and everything related uh, to your needs and you can just use them and install them just the way you want. 
so uh, it's now taking a bit longer so for that uh, april it's uh, installing what we can do is we can consider what we are going to do in this lecture so in this lecture what we will try to do is we will try to execute some of the scrappy basic instructions we will try to scrap our website and then uh, we will try to figure out some information or uh, let's say uh, any sort of information from the site and then later on i will tell you how you can just replicate this thing same as it is in a scrappy script so uh, this says that package uh, scrappy install successfully just close it okay and now when i type scrappy shell again it will leads me towards the scrap okay uh, actually it's now uh, installing and there are certainly two processes running uh, which is causing all this issue so hopefully we'll be in the scrappy shell in a minute or two so now uh, what we will do is we will just simply uh, try to get into try to get uh, into some of the website and we will try to figure out some of the information present on that website so over here my internet speed is going down and now what we can do is we can just simply search for a uh, post question uh, let's say imdb uh, we can open a imdb top movies site and over here what we can do is we can try to figure out the list of movies of imdb uh, top movies from imdb So uh, these are the list of top 250 movies of IMDb and what we can do uh, we can just we will just try to figure it out all of the list of these movies from the other scrappy shell but uh, before that I want you guys to look quotes to scrap. So uh, this is uh, most of the uh, trivial sites that most of the developers used when they are uh, trying to teach you guys about the scrapping and I will also try to accumulate this as well. So for this page what we can do is we can just copy this URL and over here we can just say fetch and this. Now what this fetch will do this fetch will extract all the information present on this web page in our scrappy shell so over here when i run it so now uh, recalling from the previous lectures that response is a variable that gets all the information related to this scrappy so related to this page so what we can do is we can say response.url and it provides me the url that it has successfully fetched and when i say response dot text i think that this is yes uh, it provides me all of the text that is present all of the text which means all of the tags all of the web page that is present over here you can just say control u and you can get all the source code of this page so now what we will be trying to do is we will try to fetch these codes from this website so let me just inspect it you can just say control shift i or you can right click and then inspect and then in the inspect section you can see that there is a div that contains all of this uh, this blue highlighted area tells you that uh, what part of the web page has been uh, in uh, contained by this div so this div contains all of the code so i don't want to go to this div i want this so when i try to move down you will see that i each of the div each of this div is uh, has contained each of a code so i will have to lead towards this code and then in this quote there is this span there is another span but this span contains the author name i don't want the author name i just want this and i want this so over here what we can do is we can just simply search that what thing that we will trying to write over in the scrappy shell we can also replicate this in chrome so i want to access the divs that has the class quote so for the CSS selectors, I will be having a complete lecture of on CSS selectors in the uh, later videos. But for now, you can just uh, write the things as it is because I just want you to get your hands dirty on uh, Scrappy. And you do not have to be 
in depth knowledge of css selectors and any other thing you just uh, have uh, to go with me to get your hand something uh, on scrap so now if you want to access this class you want to access this div that contains the class code first of all what if i say div when i say div it will select all of the divs you can see this yellow region it's selecting all of the divs but i do not want to select all of the divs what i want to do is i want to select a div that contains a class code now it is only selecting these divs you notice something that initially it was selecting uh, almost every div in the page but now when i classify it that i want the divs that has the class code it has leads me towards only these divs so fine up till here and now when in this div i want to go to a span and what if now when i say the span it will all it will leads me towards both of the span this span and this span let's see when i say this and span you will notice it's leading me towards this span and then it will leads me towards this span when i press enter both of the spans for the next div both span next div both span next div both span and so and so forth but i want the span that has a class text so now you will notice that i am only being Uh, able to access the use uh, you can see the codes so this is the actual css selector for me to access the codes so now let me just copy this out over here what we can do is we can write a css selector to fetch the codes we can say response dot css i want this css selector and what i want is i want to fetch that text from them because over here you can see that when you are in this span the actual uh, code is present in this text so i can say i want this text and if i say get it will just get me the first uh, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking uh, so this code and if i say get all uh, the get actually uh, what gets is doing that get uh is just fetching out the first code of this page and if i want to fetch all of the page what i can do is i can just simply say instead of get i can simply say get all and it will fetch me all of the codes so you can just uh, say response dot css uh, one more thing i want to tell you guys that do not try to copy paste things yet uh, just try to do or write this thing by your own hand so that uh, you guys get familiar with the syntax as well so when i say this now i have got all of the text over here oh, sorry uh, i forgot to type the text okay i want to fetch the text and then get all now it's providing me with all list of all the text and uh, you can just simply iterate over it uh, if you are familiar with python uh, you guys must have known what i am doing over here and if you are not i'll just ask you guys again as i asked before in the prerequisite section uh, that just pause the video take our another course on python uh, it's just a crash course uh, it just covers the basic need for this course of python and then you can come back and you will uh, be and we will all will be on the same page so what i can do is i can just simply iterate over it for quote in this i want to print quote q uh, u o oh, okay uh, i think i just made a typo uh, actually i was saying q u o t e over here and down there i was saying q u o t e so print q o u d actually the spelling was q u o but uh, just ignore the spelling so now you can see that it's fetching all of the uh, codes in this and in this for loop i am iterating on each of the code and i am just displaying you guys about the code that the first code is this and the first code over here is this as well the second code is it's our choices it's our choices it's same and then we can move to the last code and we can say a day without sunshine a day without sunshine is like you have 
uh, it's like you know night so uh, these are the course that we have fetched so in this lecture uh, I have told you guys I have just get your hands dirty on the scrappy uh, we try to figure out some of the information present on this page and we just iterate over it and display this and in the next lecture what we will do is we will also try to figure out the author name of the quotes hi I am Ahmed from Prism and this is a course on scrappy from scratch to pro so in the previous lectures what we have done is we have just simply tried to scrap the quotes from this website but now uh, what I want you guys to do is to just simply get out the author name so uh, it's just quite easy and we will try to figure out this and uh, for this uh, purpose we are again using the same project and this got the scrap installed in it so scrappy shell uh, instead of fetching you can also provide the link over here as well uh, scrappy shell and this and it will also uh, get you the response from this URL so you can check that response uh, response dot URL uh, leads me towards this URL which means that I have the information of all this URL so now in the previous lecture what we have done is we have just simply figured out uh, the way of doing uh, span and here we go text uh, so we just figured out the way to get out the course from this site and we can also do this again that for x in response dot CSS we can just simply provide the CSS selector and then we can fetch the text and I want them all and over here what I what I did is just just I print the X and it gets me all of the quotes but I want the name of the author as well over here so for that what we can do is we can just simply say that response dot CSS uh, now for the author let's just do some uh, research on this that how we can figure out the name of the author that we can do is I want this that contains the quote Q U O T E and then I want to get the span but the span you can see that span is both over here I got this span that contains the text uh, that contains the quote and I got this span that actually contains the name of the author and when I open this span I figured out that I also have a small tag over here or I have a class author over here that provides me with Albert Einstein name so for this I at this level after getting to the span I'll just ignore this span I can just type there are multiple ways over here let me just show you some of the ways and uh, after getting to this day what I can do is I can just directly get to this small tag and as there is only one small tag it will just lead me over here and this is one way one other way is you can just simply provide the name of the class of the tag and it will also lead me towards the name of the author you can see this and then there is another way is you can just simply uh, navigate through that span I want to go to the span and in the span I want to select the small and it will again leads me towards this author tag and if I say author it will again lead me towards this so it's totally up to you uh, what you are going to select but I'll say that you have to prefer the smaller CSS selectors because it's quite readable and it's quite efficient and then when I copy it what I can do is I can simply say this and I want the text and I want them all so here I get a list that contains the name of the fine so one more thing is what I will do is I will try to uh, show you guys the quote and the name of the author in one go uh, let's just see that uh, whether it is possible or not and if it is possible is it returning us a tuple or whatsoever uh, we will see uh, later uh, but let's just do what uh, we are trying to do is just simply display the name of the author as well uh, name of actual quote and the name of the author uh, side by side so now what we can do is we can just simply say that uh, response dot css I want to get the okay, uh, diff 
dot code q u r t e span dot text and text and it provides me with the text and what you can do is you can just put the comma and you can further uh, look for any put any other css selector in the same css selector and then what we can do is we can simply say that i want div dot code q u o t e i want dot author and i want the text of this and i want you to get all so now you can see that i am getting this quote and then i am getting the name of the author i am getting this quote and i am getting the name of the author i am getting this quote and i am getting the name of the author so uh, this is uh, quite easy and you can just simply parse it the, in the way you want uh, it's not a big deal but it's not a good approach so uh, what uh, we have done is we have just created a flattened list that has the name of the author uh, that has the quote and the author name but what if that uh, a case occurs that where there is no author name of the quote so what we will do is uh, we will be considering the position of the uh, we will be expecting a author name on that position but we will be getting a quote and from later on the uh, that index everything will be ruined up because let's say i am considering that on even numbers uh, that on odd numbers 1 3 5 7 i am getting the quotes one even index even index i am getting the quotes and on the odd index and on odd on the odd index i am getting the quotes and on the even index i am getting the name of the author and this is the name of the author but if at any single point this thing changes that uh, at any particular instance on the even number instead of being the author i get the quote and then from onwards this i will be facing this problem that i will be con i was considering that at the odd numbers the actual thing was quote but now after this misplacement at the even number has been actually transplanted to the quotes and the odd number will be assigned to the author so it's quite complicated uh, if you guys just uh, try to dive deep into it you can uh, pretty much understand what i am trying to say over here so now the answer to that is you can just simply get out the css selector and then Uh, i am not asking about a text i am just asking that you will get out a css selector and then from this css selector you will further append the css queries on it a css selector on it and you can get out uh, further information so what i am trying to do is over here that instead of getting this particular thing out over here instead of getting this thing out what we can do is we can just take this div out we can take this div out we can iterate over these divs i hope that you guys are understanding me over here that we will iterate over these divs and for each of this div we will try to access this and this for each of this div we will try to access this and this for each of this div we will try to access this and this so now uh, just buckle up we are going to do something uh quite interesting and i hope that it will be going to be a roller coaster ride for you and if you are not getting it do not worry about it i am just doing all this uh, half an hour tutorial in this introduction section just to get your interest in the scrapping and just to tell you guys about how interesting scrappy is and how powerful scrappy is so over here back to that. we can what we can do is i can simply uh, figure out that i want these divs i want this uh, uh i guess i have lost it uh, inspect and over here so now i am getting this div over here and this div over here this div over here this div over here so what i will do is i will just simply select i trade over these divs i can say uh, let me just type it over here control f control v i want a class that contains code and it providing me with all of these divs so over here what we can do is we can simply say for div in response dot css and over here what we can say is i want the code and now instead of getting it i am just uh, instead of providing anything to fetch i am just saying that get all oops sorry 
I have to put uh, another uh, column afterwards. So uh, let's just ignore it. So uh, let me just take you guys towards this uh, control V and then response dot get first. Let, let me just put the get first. So here you can see I'm actually instead of getting anything, any particular text, what I am doing is I am getting this all the stuff. I am getting all of this information present inside the complete div. So I can just simply save it. I'm just getting this complete first div. I'm not getting any text. I'm not getting any uh, author. I got the complete div that contains all of this information, but I'm not particularly getting any quotes or any author name. So over here, let me just paint it get and put me just X over here. Now, okay. So now the issue is that when we try to put this get, uh, this get provides us with a string. So this string is not uh, does not contains any CSS selector. So instead of doing this, uh, what we can do is, oops, I think I have uh, pasted some wrong thing. So this and this now it provides me with all of the CSS selectors. Initially, it was providing me, uh, as just I said before, it is it was providing me with all of the text. So this is one thing that you guys have to remember that I intentionally created this mistake. Uh, these things are fumbled upon most of my colleagues and most of my students that they just do that they try to put get and they try to get all of the CSS all of the uh, selectors instead of the component so over here when we type the get it just provides you with a string or a list of strings if you type get it provides you a string if you type get all it provides you with a list of strings that contains the information but if you want uh, it is uh, what get does it provides you this whole div in a form of string and you cannot further manipulate it if you type get and if you do not type the get it will gives you this div as a whole entity and you can I have further more CSS selectors on it. I'm just emphasizing on it again. I'm just repeating it again that if you try to get it, it just provides you with the strings. And if you are trying to figure out, if you are trying to apply further more CSS selectors on a particular selected div, you do not have to put that div. If you put that div, it gives you strings. If you do not put the get, it will just provide you with the thing you want. It will just provide you with the div that has actually be uh, further. You can apply CSS selectors on them. So over here, uh, what we can do is we can simply say uh, that response dot quote over here for uh, Q U O T E for quote div in this. Just simply now uh, the thing is I'm on actually I am on this div when I'm iterating over it I'm iterating on each of these divs so over here what we can do is we can simply say that uh, what this is this is a typo I'm sorry uh, let me just rename it so over here let me just type it code for code selector because it's a selector it's not a string so for code selector what we can do is we can say q u o t e quote underscore selector dot css and then for the css what i want is i want to get this uh, i want to get this that dot quote at instead of uh, in the quote q u uh, U O T E inside the code I want to get dot text I want to access to this span and over here what we will do is we will just do the same thing I want this text and I want the text of it and just get and then over here what we can do is we can simply say okay I forgot to print it so uh, you can see it's just successfully providing me with the quotes and then when I say this and when I say 
this and instead of dot text what i will do is i want to get to this pen and i want this small i this author uh, what i can do is i can simply say a u t h o r and it provides me with the author i can say that instead of text i want this author and it provides me with the author's name now when i try to write all of this thing in a one for loop it will provides me with Uh, this and this thing and then this thing so now uh, the major advantage of this thing is uh, what you can do is we, we can simply uh, do this thing or uh, create this thing out from this thing as well Uh, that contains the name of author and the name of the uh, that contains the quote and the name of the author but the issue would be if any of a particular single instance of quote or a author is missing it will just uh, create a chaos for the next ones but over here the advantage is that these two lines are independent of all of the divs so if any particular div does not contain the quote it will not affect the further proceedings of any of the quote so uh this is it for the codes.py section uh this is it for this uh, course to step section and now we will be heading towards this website and from here i will try to just simply perform uh, to fetch out these names for uh, what i want you to guys over here is just to pause this video and try to figure out just the names of the top 250 movies from this page uh, this page over here you can just simply type imdb top 250 movies and you can get to this page and you uh, you will try to get these names of the movies and just print it on the terminal just pause the video give it a go and when you will come back uh, we will try to solve this on our own uh, so i hope that you guys managed through it so uh, let first of all we will have to copy this over here and just type fetch to fetch all of the information back then So now our response dot URL is instead of equaling to uh, this code dot scrap is now equal to IMDb dot this this this. Now I get all of the uh, information present on this page. So now what I will do is as I have to figure out the uh, the show check redemption inspect okay over here. so any particular span any particular thing that i can try which three this div contains whole of the list of the movies this is a further div on it and this so now first of all i want to get to this div data style okay this contains the image this now for this div uh this div contains this h3 and this h3 in this h3 uh so i think this h3 has to be it so when i say control f control v it provides me with 116 h3 so i don't think so that this is a good approach h3 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 uh i think This if these movies are one zero four. I think we have made our point, uh, but I don't think so that these movies should be one zero four in number over here. Ah uh, yes, these movies are one hundred and it's one zero four. So this is considering ah uh, four more elements that are present in header. So for this, what we can do is we can simply say I want H three. so uh, what i'll do do is i'll say i want h3 but i want h3 with this class so now it's just taking me towards these movie names over here so you can see i'm only getting these movie names and this is 100 so which means i'm only getting the name of these movies so over here i am in this h3 what i'll do is i will try to get into this anchor tag and for this anchor tag i'll just figure out the text just cut this just go over here say response.css 
I want this H3 with the name of this and this H3 I want to access the anchor tag and then in the anchor tag I want to get the text and let me just say get and it provides me with the first name of the movie which means I am doing great so for name in response dot css and then h uh, this name text dot get all oops sorry i always forgot to put a colon in at the end of this uh, then print the name so now this is it i'm getting the name of all of the movies of top 250 uh, you can just check it on your own these movies are actually the accurate one the godfather the dark knight the godfather part 2 these movies are just the same as over here so now uh, if you are further interested what you can do is you can simply figure out the name of the movie and its description so uh, it's totally up to you you can just simply skip this part and uh, this is it for the tutorial section of this scrappy and now from the next tutorial we will be moving towards more uh, on side of the theoretical term or we will be shifting towards writing the scrappy uh, script and one last thing that i want to mention over here that when you try to do scrap you do not just write the things out in the shell you just uh, what you do is you write the script in your in your uh, script over here in your python script we will just create a framework we will write the same exact thing that we did over here we will try to write this in here and then we will try to run that script and it will figure out all of these things for us so uh, for this tutorial this is it hi i'm Ahmed from prism and this is a course on scrappy from scratch to pro so in the previous lectures we have seen about some of the hands-on uh, we actually did some of the hands-on uh, on scrappy and now we are heading towards our next uh, more technical thing uh, that is comparison analysis so uh, there are particularly uh, many alternatives of Scrappy as well but the uh, beauty of Scrappy is that Scrappy is a Python framework and Python is nowadays the top language to be known. So uh, when you are learning Scrapping directly or indirectly you are also getting more and more familiar with Python and that will surely be helping you in the long run. So uh, these all are the alternatives of the Scrappy available and if you want you can just simply open them and you can uh, just simply uh, look for them on the internet. There are Scrappy API, Scrapper API, Octapars, Agent-T, uh, iMarcos, Import.io, Scrapbox, Web Scrapper, and the last beautiful soap. Uh, so uh, you might have noticed that I have simply uh, bolded uh, the beautiful soup. And the reason for this is that beautiful soup is, uh, is not actually a scrapper. It's basically a helper. Uh, you can uh, use beautiful soup uh, directly to scrap the scrap the website as well but the actual uh, use of beautiful soup is to provide the further information or further ease for the scrappy to figure out the information so you can just use beautiful soup for your ease to provide uh, the scrappy uh, basically the what beautiful soup do is that it takes a cs it takes an html and provides you with the particular tasks, particularly tags, where uh, some of the things that Scrappy fumbles up, uh, Beautiful Soup can help you there. Uh, there is a quite uh, little chances that the Scrappy fumbles up on some CSS selectors, but uh, it uh, happens, uh, you can say, once in a blue moon. Uh, but for that, uh, whenever you encounter such problem, uh, I am just giving you the tool of Beautiful Soup. Uh, you can just search on internet as well. It's quite easy, it's quite handy, and you can get through it quite easily. So uh, this was the comparison analysis, uh, this was the lecture on comparison analysis and I just taught you about some of the alternatives of the Scrappy and also about the beautiful soup that is more of a companion of a Scrappy uh, as compared to the alternative. So uh, in the next lecture we will see further more things. Hi, I am Ahmed from Prism and this is a course on Scrappy from scratch to pro. So up till here what we have seen is basically uh, I have told you about some of the introduction of the Scrappy and then uh, we just seen about the documentation of the Scrappy and then I just did the comparison analysis and we also ha have seen some of the practical implementations of the Scrappy uh, while just doing something by, by uh, just doing our hands dirty uh, on Scrappy we just tried to scrap some of the information from codes.py uh, and then 
uh, what we did was we tried to figure out the top 250 movies from IMDb site. So uh, this was pretty much that we have did so far and we also did the comparison analysis and I have taught you about uh, the beautiful soup that you can use to just simply tell about uh, just simply uh, compensate the things that Scrappy cannot proceed. So for this lecture what we are going to see is the advantages of using the Scrappy. So uh, the scope of Scrappy. First of all, uh, we will discuss about the scope of Scrappy. So the scope of a particular thing can be defined as the limitation or the uh, area that the particular thing can cover or the extent to which a particular thing can work. So what websites can Scrappy scrap? Uh, the Scrappy can uh, generally scrap all of the websites present on the internet, but uh, there are certain limitations from the, for the Scrappy as well because uh, most of the websites or most of the servers or you can say probably uh, all of them do not want you to get your information uh, get their information uh, for your private use because uh, after getting that information you can just do anything from that so uh, let's say uh, there's a website uh, that contains the information of the doctors and they want you to come to their website and get the information from them uh, and uh, eventually increase their traffic site uh, the traffic on their site but what you are doing is you are fetching all the information right away from their website and then you are just trying to do uh, and then, then you are just uh, you will just search in the json format or the csv format whatever format you try to save your output and you can just get the, that information right away without going at a particular site so this is majorly the reason is that uh, to uh, avoid this thing the web some certain websites has provided you uh, with uh, you can say they have certain robot detectors they, they, that can detect that the robots uh, or uh, kind of some script is trying to crawl their website or it's a general user so they can distrib uh, distinguish between them and they can just identify you and block you so uh, you do not have to worry about it because Scrappy has certain parameters which you can set that the uh, let's say the delay timing or if you want to uh, mimic that the Scrappy is trying to scrap the website just like the way a human will uh, you can just simply put the delays in Scrappy that uh, after opening a link you have to wait for five seconds to open another link and at the night you can just uh, make your crawler run for the whole night and in the morning you will get the information so it's not a big deal and then uh, the certain limitations of Scrappy uh, are furthermore that you cannot scrap Facebook you cannot scrap Instagram you cannot scrap uh, let's say LinkedIn because uh, they have very strict policies and they have uh, to be honest very strict servers uh, that can identify you and they, uh, they can certainly block you so uh, it's uh, my advice for you that if you are trying to do something with Facebook or Instagram or anything uh, at where your account has been registered uh, to the service or you have a login ID or you have a uh, account here uh, whatsoever uh, just do not try to do this via your own account just try to configure another alternate account and do all of this stuff and all of your uh, research all of your work uh, through this account uh, through that account uh, do not use your original account because after getting blocked uh, you can uh, face certain issues of uh, blocking or any other thing so just avoid uh, using your original account for that purpose and then uh, as I have told you you cannot scrap Facebook you cannot scrap Instagram uh, but you can give a try uh, it's totally up to you and then uh, up till here we have seen about the scope of the scrappy and we have also seen what sites can scrappy scrap and also uh, one more thing that I skipped uh, I forgot to tell you uh, that scrappy can also scrap the uh, the dynamic data get coming from the server via Ajax so uh, what websites are being constructed as that some of the information are being sent to you straight away you get the information right away so uh, you just get the information and you can then uh, in the response as just we get about the course.py and just like we get at imdb but there are certain websites what they do is that they for the initial response they just send you some uh, information that are not complete uh, these are just information for the users to engage them initially and then afterwards getting that information your browser uh, tells the server to send the further information and that information comes through ajax request or there are some sort of other ways but uh, let's just consider ajax for this time uh, so uh, they, the server then sends the information 
नॉट वाया एनी तेज रिफ्रेश बट वाया एज एक्स रिक्वेस्ट सो आई विल ट्राई टू शो यू गाइज इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर अबाउट दिस थिंग एज वेल सो फॉर नाउ यू कैन ऑल्सो स्क्रैप द डेट एट दैट कैम फ्रॉम एज एक्स रिक्वेस्ट वाया स्क्रैपी यू जस्ट हैव टू रेप्लीकेट दैट थिंग एंड द थिंग द वन मोर थिंग इज दैट द जावा स्क्रिप्ट generated files cannot be scrapped via scrappy uh, because you have to execute a particular script to get the information so it's quite complicated you have plugins available to do this uh, but this uh, but that would not be purely scrappy uh, you will also be needing uh, some helping material to compensate the uh, needs of the scrappy so uh, this is it for this lecture and in the next lecture i will also i will show you about the ajax request and also the usage areas of the scrappy Hi, I'm Ahmed from Prism, and this is a course on Scrappy from Scratch to Pro. So, in the previous lectures, what we have seen is that I have told you about some of the limitations of Scrappy, and then what we have seen is basically how Scrappy, uh, how, uh, what are the limitations of the Scrappy, and what are the certain websites that do even do not allow you to scrap their uh, servers. So, uh, this was uh, from the previous lecture, and uh, I also told you guys that I uh, will be. Uh, showing you guys about the ajax request in the next lecture but for this lecture i am skipping this right away because i think uh, in the later lectures when we will be doing some practical hands on uh, it will be uh, more uh, reasonable for you guys to understand it over there uh, because uh, for now if we am going deep into the more technical things or more ajax or request thing uh, you might have uh, get stumble upon that what i am trying to say so uh, usage areas for this lecture so the scrappy has a wide range of usage areas these are uh, only the few or you can say the top uh, four uh, for me uh, that you can use scrappy for so first of all it's data mining so for data mining you can use scrappy uh, what data mining is data mining stands for if you have to mine certain data if you have to get certain data from a certain resource for any purpose you use it uh, you term it as data mining so from scrappy you can get any data you can uh, perform any analysis on it uh, which is our next uh, domain uh, that is data analysis and in data analysis you can after getting the particular information uh, you can perform any any further analysis or operations on it and even on the run time you can also consider uh, data and doing data analysis on the current in currently get information in the scrappy so uh, let's say i have a particular site that provides me the ratings of a particular number so i only want to get through i only want to get the information of those sites that have a rating of 9 uh, 9 and above so at the run time i can do this analysis in scrapping that uh, the sites i'm going to scrap has uh, the uh, let's say the site that i'm going to scrap have what kind of have even the rating of 9 or above and have what kind of information uh, you can do just anything run time right away using scrappy so also uh, if you have to perform any data analysis on any other project and you need data for that you can use scrappy to get the information and you can perform data analysis on them uh for example i have to fetch the information of uh, let's say imdb and i want to f uh, uh let's say i want to get the name of the directors whose movies are big hits or i want to get the directors of the big hits movies so uh you can perform any uh, analysis you can get all the movies name from the imdb you can get all the uh a director's name from the imdb of that particular movie and then you can see that who's uh, that what are the common directors that are present amongst all of the top hits movies or that that are occurred in more of more than one movies that have succeeded and you can perform uh, further a number of analysis i'm just uh, providing you the tip of the iceberg uh, you can perform any number of analysis you can do any analysis on the data you have just mined using scrapping so next thing is search engine so uh, <clears throat> the search engine basically uh, you can say that the google the bing and there are other uh, search engines they use spiders to crawl the website and get the particular information that you have searched did you ever wondered that how google works or how bing works or how any search engine works that they get uh, the particular information you want from the internet right away and they just provide you with it Uh, and how they are all doing this so uh, they have generally uh, written uh, spiders 
uh, not at that basic level that we are going to write they have uh, spiders at much higher level and they have written the crawlers the spiders that just crawl the internet or they are just crawling the internet uh, continuously and they are fetching out new links and new informations present on the internet and then when you search anything they just visit their catalog they find out the particular information they see at what link that information is present and they just get you uh, this is also uh, known as SEO that uh, you provide particular main information of your thing in headers uh, that if uh, Google tries to crawl your website and it just get the all the information present in the headers first and then if you if any particular person search the information they just see that whose site contains those headers that has been uh, that has a solution to that particular query so they just throw you up uh, so they just throw the user up uh, with the particular website so search engines are basically made from uh, data crawl uh, web crawlers and they are just continuously crawling the website uh, web servers and certain uh, internet and they are providing you with the information next is natural language processing <clears throat> so uh, what is nlp uh, most of you might have not been familiar with nlp so uh, natural language processing means that you can process the natural language uh, it literally mean that uh, natural language means uh, that the way I am talking right now is English, uh, you can say French, you can say Spanish, you can say uh, any other language in the world but which the language that is natural. I am not talking about uh, programming languages, I am not talking about Python, C++, Java, uh, PHP or any other programming language but I am talking about natural language. So in natural language processing the scrappy can also help you for getting the particular information uh, for example, I want to train a robot to answer for a particular queries on uh, current affairs. So for that, what I can do is I can certainly write a spider uh, that can go on Dawn News or that can go on CNN, BBC or any other uh, uh, news uh, website and crawl all the information present on that site and save in them. And then you can just simply write a Python script that can just using that data can answer any question. and this is a course on scrappy from scratch to pro so up till here what we have seen is basically uh, I have told you about some of the introduction of the scrappy and then uh, we just seen about the documentation of the scrappy and then I just did the comparison analysis and we also ha have seen some of the practical implementations of the scrappy uh, while just doing something by, by uh, just doing our hands dirty uh, on Scrappy, we just try to scrap some of the information from codes.py uh, and then uh, what we did was we tried to figure out the top 250 movies from IMDb site. So uh, this was pretty much that we have did so far and we also did the comparison analysis and I have taught you about uh, the beautiful soup that you can use to just simply tell about uh, just simply uh, compensate the things that Scrappy cannot proceed. So. For this lecture, what we are going to see is the advantages of using the Scrappy. So, uh, the scope of Scrappy. First of all, uh, we will discuss about the scope of Scrappy. So, the scope of a particular thing can be defined as the limitation or the uh, area that the particular thing can cover or the extent to which a particular thing can work. So, what websites can Scrappy scrap? Uh, the Scrappy can uh, generally scrap all of the websites present on the internet but uh, there are certain limitations from the, for the Scrappy as well because uh, most of the websites or most of the servers or you can say probably uh, all of them do not want you to get your information, uh, get their information uh, for your private use because uh, after getting that information you can just do anything from that. So uh, let's say 
uh, there's a website uh, that contains the information of the doctors and they want you to come to their website and get the information from them uh, and uh, eventually increase their traffic site uh, the traffic on their site but what you are doing is you are fetching all the information right away from their website and then you are just trying to do uh, and then, then you are just uh, you just search in the JSON format or the CSV format, whatever format you try to save your output, and you can just get the, that information right away without going at a particular site. So this is majorly the reason is that uh, to uh, avoid this thing, the web some certain websites has provided you uh, with uh, you can say they have certain robot detectors that they, they can detect that the robots uh, or uh, kind of some script is trying to crawl their website or it's a general user so they can distrib uh, distinguish between them and they can just identify you and block you so uh, you do not have to worry about it because scrappy has certain parameters which you can set that the uh, let's say the delay timing or if you want to uh, mimic that the scrappy is trying to scrap the website just like the way a human will uh, you can just simply put that delay in scrappy that uh, after opening a link you have to wait for five seconds to open another link and at the night you can just uh, break your crawler run for the whole night and in the morning you will get the information so it's not a big deal and then uh, the certain limitations of scrappy uh, are furthermore that you cannot scrap facebook you cannot scrap instagram you cannot scrap uh, let's say LinkedIn because uh, they have very strict policies and they have uh, to be honest very strict servers uh, that can identify you and they, uh, they can certainly block you so uh, it's uh, my advice for you that if you are trying to do something with Facebook or Instagram or anything uh, at where your account has been registered uh, to the service or you have a login ID or you have a uh, account here uh, whatsoever uh, just do not try to do this via your own account just try to configure another alternate account and do all of this stuff and all of your uh, research all of your work uh, through this account uh, through that account uh, do not use your original account because after getting blocked uh, you can uh, face certain issues of uh, blocking or any other thing so just avoid uh, using your original account for that purpose and then uh, as I have told you, you cannot scrap Facebook, you cannot scrap Instagram, uh, but you can give a try, uh, it's totally up to you. And then uh, up till here we have seen about the scope of the scrappy and we have also seen what sites can scrappy scrap and also uh, one more thing that I skipped, uh, I forgot to tell you, uh, that scrappy can also scrap the uh, the dynamic data get coming from the server via Ajax. So uh, what websites are being constructed as that some of the information are being sent to you straight away. You get the information right away. So uh, you just get the information and you can then uh, in the response as just we get about the course.py and just like we get at IMDB. But there are certain websites what they do is that they for the initial response they just send you some uh, information that are not complete. Uh, these are just information for the users to engage them initially and then afterwards getting that information your browser uh, tells the server to send the further information and that information comes through ajax request or there are some sort of other ways but uh, let's just consider the ajax for this time uh, so uh, they, the server then sends the information uh, not via any uh, page refresh but via ajax request so i will try to uh, show you guys in the next lecture uh, about this thing as well so for now uh, you can also scrap the data that came from uh, ajax request via scrappy you just have to replicate that thing and the the thing uh, the one more thing is that the javascript generated files cannot be scrapped via scrappy uh, because you have to execute a particular script to get the information so it's quite complicated you have plugins available to do this uh, but this uh, but that would not be purely scrappy uh, you will also be needing uh, some helping material to compensate the uh, needs of the scrappy so uh, this is it for this lecture and in the next lecture i will also i will show you about the ajax request and also the usage areas of the scrappy